Getting a divorce in Minnesota is actually simpler than you might think. One spouse must be a Minnesota resident for at least 180 days before filing for divorce. The divorce may be filed in either spouse's residing county. Once the residency requirement is completed, a legal grounds for a divorce must be established. The only grounds for divorce in Minnesota is irrevocable breakdown of the marriage shown by living separate and apart for 180 days or serious marital discord adversely affecting the attitude of one or both of the spouses toward the marriage. Minnesota requires a parenting plan for child custody. Joint or sole custody may be awarded. Sole custody is awarded in the best interest of the child and the child's cultural background, physical and mental health of all parties, capability and desire of each parent to give the child love, affection, and guidance, and to continue raising the child in the child's culture and religion or creed, if any. Preference of the child, if the child is of sufficient age and capacity, the length of time the child has lived in a stable, satisfactory environment and the desirability of maintaining continuity, the wishes of the parents, the child's adjustment to his or her home, school, and community, the mental and physical health of all individuals involved, the relationship of the child with parents, siblings, and other significant family members, the conduct of the proposed guardian only as it bears on his or her relationship with the child, the stability of the home environment likely to be offered by each parent, a need to promote continuity and stability in the life of the child, the effect of any child or spouse abuse on the child, the child's primary caretaker, and any other factors. Being the primary caretaker is considered, but does not imply favor in all situations. If both parents request joint custody, it is assumed that the arrangement is in the child's best interest, unless there has been any spousal abuse. If there's been any history of spousal abuse, it is assumed that joint custody is not in the best interest of the child. Additionally, joint custody is based on dispute resolution methods, the effect of one parent having custody, and the ability of the parents to cooperate and make decisions jointly. If both parents seek custody of a child who is too young to express a preference, the primary caretaker is awarded custody. The following are considered in determining child support the financial resources of the child, the financial resources, earnings, income, and assets of the parents, the standard of living the child would have enjoyed if the marriage had not been dissolved, the physical and emotional conditions and educational needs of the child, the amount of public aid received by the child or parent, any income tax consequences of the payment of support, and any debt of the parents. Marital misconduct is not considered. If the parent requesting support payments is receiving or has applied for public aid, the support payments must be made to the public agency responsible for child support enforcement in Minnesota. Official child support guidelines are contained in Minnesota statutes. Minnesota is an equitable distribution state. Each spouse retains his or her separate property consisting of property acquired prior to the marriage, any gifts or inheritances, property exchange for such non-marital property or an increase in value of such non-marital property. All other marital property, including any pension or retirement plans, is divided, regardless of fault, after considering the contribution of each spouse to the acquisition of the marital property, including the contribution of each spouse as homemaker, the economic circumstances of each spouse at the time the division of property is to become effective, the length of the marriage, the age and health of the spouses, the occupation of the spouses, the amount and sources of income of the spouses, the vocational skills of the spouses, the employability of the spouses, the liabilities and needs of each spouse and the opportunity of each for further acquisition of capital assets and income, any prior marriage of each spouse, and any other factor necessary to do equity and justice between the spouses. Either spouse may be awarded maintenance, regardless of fault, if seeking spouse lacks sufficient property to provide for reasonable needs considering the standard of living attained during the marriage, is unable to provide adequate self-support considering the standard of living attained during the marriage through appropriate employment, or is the custodian of a child whose condition or circumstances make it appropriate that the custodian not be required to seek employment outside the home. The award of maintenance is based on a consideration of the following factors. The sacrifices the homemaker has made in terms of earnings, employment, experience, and opportunities. 
the time necessary to acquire sufficient education and training to enable the spouse to find appropriate employment, that spouse's future earning capacity, and the probability of completing education and training and becoming fully or partially self-supporting, the standard of living established during the marriage, the duration of the marriage and, in the case of the homemaker, the length of absence from employment and the extent to which any education, skills, or experience have become outmoded or earning capacity has become permanently diminished. The ability of the spouse from whom support is sought to meet his or her needs while meeting those of the spouse seeking support. The financial resources of the spouse seeking maintenance, including marital property apportioned to such spouse and such spouse's ability to meet his or her needs independently. The contribution of each spouse to the marriage, including services rendered in homemaking, childcare, education, and career building of the other spouse. The age of the spouses. The physical and emotional conditions of the spouses. Any loss of earnings, seniority, retirement benefits, or other employment opportunities foregone by the spouse seeking maintenance, and any other factor the court deems just and equitable. If the spouse receives public aid, the payments are made through the public aid agency. Mediation may be ordered in cases of contested custody unless there is a history of spousal, physical, or sexual child abuse. Visit us today at www.mydivorcepapers.com and click on Minnesota at the bottom of the page. Let mydivorcepapers.com help you file for divorce today.